Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. Tonight I'm out in my garden and I'm going to be planting up some corn, espresso corn. It's one of my favorite corns. It's pretty much all I ever grow anymore. And black beans. So black beans uh, take a little bit longer to grow. I forget how many days they are. 85 days. And we have an average of 110 frost-free days here in Saskatchewan, Canada, in my part of Saskatchewan, Canada. So um, I want to get those in the ground and get them going so that I can get a good harvest off in case we get an early frost. And uh, the espresso corn, I'm not even sure how many days it takes, but it's usually ready in mid-August. And so I'm actually going to do a couple of sowings a couple of weeks apart. So this will be my first sowing. And then in about two weeks, I'm going to go back and sow the other half of the uh, area where I'm putting them to do a second sowing so that all my corn isn't ready all at the same time. You need a good stand of corn all planted together so that they can cross pollinate one another. But you, you don't need to have your entire corn crop started all at the same time. And if you're growing different varieties, if you look at their maturity dates, then you can offset them with planting sometimes to be able to grow them closer together than, than they normally could be if they're ones that would cross pollinate with one another and cause you to get different strains than you wanted. But on the way over to plant the corn, which is going to be back in that corner there, I thought we'd have a quick peek and just see what's going on in the garden because I've been doing planting and things and I don't think I've even brought you along for most of it. I've just been popping out here when I can and getting things done. So right beside me here, I have some peas that are coming up. And then next to them is some beans. Uh, this is the bed at the far end of this bed is where the, the black beans. Did I say beans? These are beets here. So I have three kinds of beets. I have red ace, Detroit golden and Merlin beets in this bed. And I think these are sugar lace snap peas or sugar peas here and like I said the the black beans will go at the far end of this bed and I'm actually going to be putting some summer squash in the center so this would be a variety bed next to me here where these red little teepee things are these are cozy coats and I have my tomatoes in them I probably don't need to we're not technically at our average last frost date yet but our winter went to summer instantly and so we haven't really been having cold nights or frosts for over a week now and the tomatoes were getting really laggy and lanky and so I took some time yesterday afternoon and popped them out so I just have them in here this these just help protect to moderate the temperature a little bit that way I didn't have to harden them off as much because they're not getting the harsh sun rays and they're not getting wind in here and it also protects them from cold weather um, and extremely hot weather just the water inside of these things here they're filled with water and that just helps regulate the temperature behind me here is cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower I think I planted that in a video but let me have a show you a closer look at things here so it's always really hard to give you a good view of what's happening under these nets here but the reason I keep my brassicas netted is because of flea beetles and they are a real problem here they're a bigger issue for me than the butterfly moth uh, cabbage moth, cabbage looper, and the net does a good job of preventing most of the flea beetles from getting in there, though there's always some that overwintered in the soil that are going to be in there anyways, I think, and a few get through the occasional rip or tear in my netting. I don't know if you can see that there, but uh, it does help. But I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the camera, but here's some that I was going to transplant into there and I just never got to it and they are covered in flea beetles everywhere, just eating them up. So I'm gonna have to make sure I rinse these off really well before I get them in there. And it looks like they need a drink too. But the cabbage that I planted out is doing quite well and they've stood up to things. We did have, after I planted these, some extremely cold weather, which I know I was just saying we had a lot of heat, but these have been here, I think for a month already now. We had a snowstorm. We've had a lot of crazy things happen in this past month. And the cauliflower and the broccoli have not fared as well. They can take a lot of cold, but I think that was just too much for too long. Coupled on with just heavy snow falling on them, I think it was just too much. So I will have to get some more transplants going in there and plant a few more from seed. And I do have some more um, things that are started in the greenhouse that I was gonna use for successions anyway, so they'll just go in there. 
So to my left. In this bed here, I have two varieties of peas planted the long way of this bed. My beds are four foot by eight foot, except for a couple back on the fence. Uh, so I have green arrow and I think homesteader peas planted here. So those should be, they're coming up and they're looking good. And I'm eager to, to get harvesting fresh peas. Beside those, I have some kohlrabi. I have some purple Vienna and white Vienna, I think it is. And I also just sprinkled some, I think there's some random radishes sprinkled on here as well. Um, I had in my little container that I hold my seed packs and one of the packs had broken open. A lot of those turnip kohlrabi radish type seeds look the same. So I'm just hoping they were radishes. I might've sprinkled turnips or something in here. And then I have some lettuces. There's a trellis here. I'm going to be putting my, my cucumbers on shortly. And underneath it right now, I just have a few lettuces that I've planted and they're just starting to come up. This is the bed where you may have saw I planted potatoes a few weeks ago. I planted sangre potatoes and a pot of potatoes. None of the potatoes will come up yet, but that's just fine. They, they will eventually. And then I've also added some violet, violet queen to the rest of the bed that I didn't, hadn't quite filled out. Oh, and I planted, what did I plant over there? I planted Pontiac potatoes behind the trellis in that other bed, kind of behind the, the kohlrabi too. So that bed is almost full now. I do have some beets and kale back in that two foot by eight foot bed over there. And next to it, I don't know how well you can see the cold frame on top there. I have some Brussels sprouts and some celery and some spinach in there. Cold frame doesn't really need to be there anymore, but I have a bunny visiting my yard that is eating off all the kale every time I plant it in that bed over there. And so since it seems to want to run through this area and eat, I have uh, just left that cold frame on that bed over there. Just. Um, as preventative measure and the Brussels sprouts and everything seem really happy under there. It's open, it's cracked day and night and I think that's just making them the happiest like that. The bed beside it, I'm not sure what to think. That down there is my garlic and I've always, I've been growing garlic for years. I've always had success with it. Nothing has come up yet, and I don't know if I'm just being impatient because really it's only been about two weeks since the snow has melted, but it just seems like I should be seeing something by now. Unusual for us to have a siren right here. Okay, so that siren's gone. So that brings us to this bed here, and that's where the corn is going. So on either side of this bed, I have peas. I have some homesteader peas down this side and some more green arrow peas down this side. They're a little further along than the others that you saw because they were planted several, I think about almost a month ago now, at least three weeks ago. So they're coming up and doing quite well even with all the snow and crazy weather we've had. This bed will also be getting a renegade pumpkin and a couple of pole beans in it, but the biggest planting, oops, the biggest planting will, whoop, will be the corn that I'm dumping all over myself. I know I said that we're not quite at our average last frost date yet, and in order to be planting things like beans and corns, you need to make sure that your soil is around 60 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, ideally. Which, so you want to um, just make sure that your soil is warm before you're planting. Now, it doesn't need to be warm far, far down. It just needs to be warm basically where you're gonna be putting those seeds and a little bit further so that as the roots go down and the soil starting to warm, they'll, they'll be warm enough. So the soil is plenty warm because we have been having such warm weather here. And so I'm gonna get this corn going. So corn wants to be planted about four centimeters, one and a half inches deep. I usually just kind of push it down to about my second knuckle and call it good. And then they say about I think it's six to eight inches or something. I usually just kind of do this between plants. So one here, one here, and then I stagger them so then there'd be one that's in between. So I don't know if you see that, there'd be one here, one here in one row, and then the next row up would have it in between. 
and that just gives them the staggering with and being able to plant them a little bit closer. And that also makes them close enough and they work well to get that good pollination that you need. So I'm gonna get planting. It's basically the back half of this uh, bed here between the two rows of peas. Okay, so I guess I forgot to hit record, but I just laid my corn out in a grid here between this drip line and just past this drip line. I have three rows of corn going about two thirds of the way down the bed, starting at the back. And they're all put in there. And I also noticed that the reason maybe that some of my, my uh, peas haven't actually quite germinated down at this end of the bed is maybe they weren't getting the same rain that the ones at that end of the bed were getting or something because there's fence in both corners here. Because uh, I noticed the soil was really, really dry and I knew my drip had run earlier in the day. I never turned this uh, line of drip on. So this bed is now turned on a drip and that'll make things grow a lot better. So let's go get those black beans planted. Okay, so I need to do a little bit of weeding. There's all sorts of dill seeds that are coming up here and clover and tree seedlings, all sorts of things coming up in this bed. So I'll give it a quick go through and then I'm going to be planting my black turtle beans. Um, I think I have enough in this pack, but I also have, uh, this is a slightly different one. I think it's called Nicaraguan black turtle beans. I don't know if there's really a difference between the two different companies, different names. I don't know, but uh, these beans need to be planted about an inch and a half deep and about four inches apart. So it's a pretty good depth, but they do well that way. And like I said, they're a longer, uh, this bean takes a little bit longer and it needs warm weather. But I think we're good with the weather here and the, we definitely should get our 85 days in. These stay on the plant until they're dried and then I pick them dry and I store them that way. Uh, in fact, we just had some black beans tonight with tacos. So I really enjoy the black beans and I'd, I always like to get a few to store away. So I'm only going to be doing about a foot and a half across my four foot, so the four foot uh, width of my bed here. And I think that should give me enough beans to go through the winter with these. So I'm just going to go over this bed real quick, just kind of smooth it out and pull up some of these weeds. There's a little bit of grass clippings from last fall on here those back out of the way. So you may have noticed I didn't do any amending with the corn and I don't plan to with the beans at all. Once the corn starts to grow and starts to set tassels, I will go in and give it some fertilizer. But my beds are pretty rich in um, organic matter and lots of good compost and things, lots of good nutrients in them. And so I'm not too worried about feeding them. Beans certainly don't need the extra feed to do well. And uh, like I said, the corn, I'll give it a little extra feed. And up until then, I will just top dress with some compost. Once they're up and growing and I can see where they are, I'll just go around and lightly spread some compost, homemade compost around them. That'll give some nutrition to the soil and also help to um, hold the moisture in around the root system. And that's the main thing for them. So seeds for black turtle beans are just exactly that. Just like the corn was just corn. The corn I used was treated seed. That's just how this company provided it for me. But they're just, it's just dried up corn kernels and that's the same with the black beans. It's just dried up black beans. Um, I've heard of people just buying dried beans at the store, grocery store and planting them that way. I've never tried that. Okay, so my black beans and my corn are planted. 
I'll still be planting some other varieties of beans, like I mentioned earlier, some pole beans. So it's just nice. I've just been slowly getting things uh, put in when I have a few extra minutes. And I've just really been enjoying this uh, gardening season so far. So let me know in the comments down below if you've uh, been able to get out into your garden and, and do some planting yet, or if it's still too wet or cold to be able to get in there. Just thanks for spending time with me in my garden tonight, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.